Welcome to Ministry in Motion, a program where we explore best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. Whether you're a pastor or a lay leader in your local church, God wants you to be a great Christian leader. And our topic today, leading in a diverse community. Take a look at your community and see how it's changing before your eyes and how you can be an excellent Christian leader in your community. I'm glad you joined us. And our guest is Dan Jackson. Dan, thanks for being with us again. Thank you. Now, many people may know you as the president of the North American Division of Seventh-day Adventist Church, but uh, you've had a broad experience, and I've learned that that involved ministering to a diverse community. So why don't you talk about your early ministry and the diversity that you were dealing with back then? Well, you know, first of all, one of the, one of the great privileges that, that God and His church uh, extended to our family was that we were able to, to live and minister as a pastor in both Sri Lanka and in India. Is that right? I did not yes. know that you were outside of uh, North America. Yes, so I had, you, you know, there, there were great learning <laughs> opportunities there and uh, understanding a different culture, understanding the different reactions of people, recognizing that while you have a set way of doing things based on your culture, that other people in their cultures have equally acceptable ways of doing things. So um, I learned that from my my pastoral work over there. How did you learn about the differences? Did you, did you go to school? Did you learn by <laughs> observation? Um, because obviously you said y you're dealing with people who are not exactly like you. Their culture, their dress, their diet, their way of thinking. Well, I will tell you, when, I, when, I, uh, when we arrived in Sri Lanka, I recognized uh, within just a very brief period of time that I really didn't know anything about the culture. So one of the things I did, I, I had a friend by the name of Brian Dialwis who was a, a teacher at Spicer Memorial College. And but, I actually went to school with Brian, well, so I knew him. So Brian said to me, when you get to Sri Lanka, there's a gentleman there who has written many books on Sri Lankan culture and how Christianity can permeate the culture. You should go and see him. And I did. I went and spent uh, several, uh, had several appointments with Dr. Lindy Alvis, who wasn't related to Brian, but uh, it was very educative. But, you know, it's when you begin to bump up against it and you're not understanding something that, that you either give up or you are open enough to penetrate through the situation and try mm. to understand how do these people think this way? Why do, why do they think it's not the way I think? Right. You know, and, and I think the sensitive leader or the sensitive pastor will always come to the conclusion that there are more than one way to think through an issue or to experience a situation and that in order to really be able to minister effectively in a diverse type of culture, one has to learn to celebrate the differences. Mm. Not only understand them, but celebrate them. I, I, I inherited a church, or I was called to a church, uh, about 1,300 members. They had- Is this back in this North America? This is back in North America. Right. Now we're talking Toronto, Ontario. But still have some diversity there. A diversity, they had 57 viable ethnic groups in that congregation. In that 1,300 member congregation. Right, and I, I remember standing up first Sabbath, I looked at those people and I said, Y'all don't know what you got, do you? <laughs> and I said, and guess what? I don't know what I got. And I said, I suppose that within 15 minutes, I could say things that would alienate or insult 10, 10 groups in this church. <laughs> and I said, so if y'all aren't going to work with me, we're really going to have a problem. So we, we just got to know each other. And, mm -hmm. But, uh, but I, I do believe that the key in terms of pastoral effectiveness is to is to celebrate the differences mm, so that's rather a, than that's push a back against lesson, them. Huh? Rather than push back against them. You have to do it my way because I was born mm. here. It's, mm. That's not the way it goes. Let me take you back to Sri Lanka because you said you were in Sri Lanka and then in India. Yes. Now, some of us who live you know, half a world away might think that those are exactly the same cultures. Not at all. Not at all. The, the, the people had very different ways of looking at things. Um, and again... There are so many different ethnic groups and so many linguistic groups 
Uh, for instance, in Sri Lanka, there, there were uh, the predominant groups were Tamil and Singhala, or Singhalese. They looked at the world from very different uh, viewpoints. When, when you get into India, of course, now you've got people from a vast country, from the, the, the more tribal areas in the northeast uh, to the, the, the areas of Delhi and then down into South India where, where the food is different, the culture is different, the language is different. They're just not the same. And so not only in not only was the culture dissimilar between Sri Lanka and India, but in a given area, you can have a, micro, a microcosm of that diversity. Mm. I, I, I was president of the church in Canada and uh, for nine years moved back and forth across that country, which is my homeland. But, uh, you know, I could tell you plainly that people in British Columbia on the West Coast <laughs> do not think the same as people in Newfoundland. And... People in Alberta don't think the same way as people in Ontario. So part of leadership is that I come to understand those differences, but that instead of pushing back against them, I embrace them and I celebrate them. So it's not kind of a toleration, but it's rather a, an embracing and a celebration. And we're going to talk after the break more about uh, ministering, leading in a diverse community. Maybe you're in a church like Dan Jackson pastored, 1,300 members, 57 different countries and ethnic groups. How do you remain connected to all of these different ways of looking at things? How do you build bridges so that you can, instead of having hostility, you can celebrate the diversity? That sounds like a miracle, but it's a miracle that can happen. It happened in the early church, Book of Acts, where they came together from many different countries and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, a community was bonded together that we call church. It's an important topic and we'll talk more about leadership, leading in a diverse community right after the break. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today is leading in a diverse community. Our guest, Dan Jackson. Dan, I learned some new things in the first part of this program about your ministry uh, there in Sri Lanka and in India. Then you came back to your homeland of Canada, but I think Canada has changed through the years, mm, hasn't it? Very much. You came to an urban setting in Toronto where you had 1,300 members and you said 57 different viable ethnic groups. Viable ethnic groups. Now, you've already told us that there were two groups in Sri Lanka that looked at things very differently. Mm -hmm. Then you said there's actually dozens or maybe scores of groups in India that look at things differently. What happens then when they all come under one roof mm -hmm. and this is their church family in Toronto? How does that work and how do you lead such a diverse community. You know, when I first uh, uh, came to that congregation, my head elder wouldn't show up. <clears throat> mm. he, he wouldn't show up. And finally, after several weeks, I got a phone call. And this is what he asked. He said, where are you going to land? You were in India. Are you going to side in with the Indians? Mm. You were in Sri Lanka. How about the Sri Lankans? You're from Western Canada. Are you going to, where are you going to land? And I remember saying to him, you know, God created a round planet and there's no corners in a circle and you're not going to get me in a corner. I didn't come here to mm. serve any one group. Mm. I came here to try to understand and work with every group. And, and I, 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 I truly believe that in any relationship that, that is as complex as a congregation. And by the way, you said something earlier that I, I, I think is really true. I have always believed that the church is a miracle. It is. I have always believed the church is a modern day miracle. You don't have to go. I mean, we, can, we, we see other miracles, but one that is with us every Sabbath morning is the miracle <laughs> that people sit together 
from every nation, kindred, tongue, and people and don't tear each other's faces off. Mm. Because that's what's happening in the world. If, if you're coming purely from a human or worldly perspective, it's hostility and survival of the fittest. Right. And it is inevitable, it is inevitable that, that in any uh, multi-cultured uh, relationship, uh, it's inevitable that there will be conflict. Because of the differences in because of the, culture? The, the, the and difference in culture. For, for right. instance, I'll give you one quick illustration. We had a brother in that church. The first Sabbath, uh, the, the, the very first Sabbath I was there, I'm preaching, and all of a sudden, I hear this, amen. But it wasn't just an amen. It was a, amen. It was a loud shout, you know. It and wasn't a Canadian It amen. wasn't a Canadian <laughs> amen, which usually isn't in existence. <laughs> But, but, but he, he, he said this loud amen. I had an associate pastor who went to him and said, you don't want to do that anymore. You're scaring the pastor. Mm. This brother made a decision. He would walk away from the church over that. Mm. And I phoned him up and I pled with him. I said, I want you to come. I want you to sit on the front row. And, and I want you to say amen. amen every time you want to say it. Mm -hmm. um, you were, you were celebrating that diversity. That's right. We, we had another, uh, in another congregation. Did he come back? He did. Oh, praise he God. He did. And we all <laughs> praised God together. But in another congregation, uh, there was a sister there. And I'll never forget this. There was a sister there who was very exuberant. She was from, uh, uh, she had kind of a, I'm trying to think of the background, Greek background. Mm -hmm. So she was, you know, she was like a mamma mia. You know, I mean, she was just enthusiastic. And she would say amen and praise the Lord. And one of, the, one of the elders of the church came to me one day and said, don't worry about her. Just give her, just give her time and she'll become like all the rest of us. Mm. And I stood right up in the pulpit. I told him I was going to do it. And I said, you know, the brother just said that this sister will become like the rest of us. And I want you to know I'm praying that'll never happen. Right. She'll be who she is. Y you know, Beautiful. We, we have in the city, and, and this is true of cities around the world now because the world is really becoming a, a, a it's not a global community it's like a neighborhood and there's so many neighborhoods in the world that are similar but in the city of toronto we have a we have a a, a church and that church is divided right in the middle with a wall on one part of the church we have a Ghanaian congregation on the other side we have a west indian congregation People will say, well, why can't they meet together? Well, they could if they wanted to, but they've, they've, they've preserved traditions and backgrounds and culture. But, you know, I've worshipped with both of those congregations. When you, when you meet with a West Indian congregation, when they sing, they sing. They, they raise a lusty din. You know, they just really put out. Now, the Ghanaians were not quite the same way, although lovely harmonies. I always loved the harmonies of, of the African people. So do I. But, but... What happens in that church is that when they take up the offering, the women tend to get up and they just kind of sway a little bit as they're singing songs. It's, it is not sensual. It's not bad. It's cultural. Right. And people ask me one time, so how will you deal with the diversity in North America? I say, well, I tell about this story and then I say to the West Indians, I say, keep on singing. And to the Ghanaians, I keep say, just keep on dancing. Yep. Of course, people don't like that in the Adventist church, but I'm, the point isn't dancing. The point is right. that, that Jesus came to this planet. And when he came to this planet, he came as a man. He got tired. He sweat. He worked with dust on his brow. He had to wash his feet, etc., etc. He became one among us. And so rather than pushing back at different cultures and different backgrounds, I think it's, our, pri it's our privilege as leaders to embrace mm, them. And celebrate. And, and to celebrate, mm. not only celebrate them, but to celebrate with the now people I, in their traditions. I want to ask that. an important question before we go to the break. Did those two churches with the wall in the middle, did they love each other? They loved each other. So For sure they loved each other. So this was not a racial divide. or mm. It was that they wanted to keep the traditions and the cultures mm. that, you know, that they were raised with. But and that they, is not also, wrong according to the book of Acts. No, and th but they also fellowshiped together. They, they did church picnics together and all kinds of things together. But they had very different worship styles. Mm. And, and you know, 
I must be, as a leader, someone who can look at someone with a totally different background mm. and who may very much disagree with me on certain issues yes. and say to that person, you are my brother, I love you, and we will walk to God's kingdom together. After the break, we want to talk about uh, diversity of, um, well, ways of looking at the Bible. What do you do if you've got some really conservative people and some people who are less conservative uh, may not see things exactly the same way? Is it possible to embrace and celebrate that diversity? Are there some limits beyond which we cannot go? What does it mean to love each other as Jesus loves us? We'll talk more about leading in a diverse community right after the break. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today, leading in a diverse community. Our guest, Dan Jackson. Dan, we've talked about your experience in different parts of the world and, and then bringing all the world under one roof mm. there in Toronto. That was an amazing uh, growth experience for you and I'm sure for the church. Um, we talked about cultural diversity, but what about um, theological diversity? Uh, there are some people who, who really emphasize uh, one aspect of salvation and others a different aspect. Some are much more zealous about uh, dressing a certain way than others. Can we, can we lead a community that's diverse theologically? Can we still embrace and, and love people in the midst of that kind of diversity? My mother and I used to play a little game. Now, my mother was a very, very conservative Seventh-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. And I consider myself to be a conservative Seventh-day Adventist, but not as conservative as my mother was. But we, we used to play this little game. She would say to me as we were dialoguing on issues, she would say, now, son, we're both serving the Lord. Mm. You in your way and I in his. <laughs> so, so, so in other words, you were doing your way, and yeah. she was doing she, the right the way. The right way, yeah, right. that's right. Right, and that, and and you. Did you, she say that with love and a smile? Well, though, she or? said that with, it was a it was a game that we would play with each other. So even in that was a love between you, even though there was some diversity. I think we need to. Uh, I think we need to cut to the chase on this subject, mm. because it is it is a vital, a vital part of who we are as a people, for instance, as Seventh-day Adventists. Mm -hmm. Ellen White makes this comment, and if I get a word too wrong, you'll have to forgive me, but she says it has been God's plan from the very beginning that through His church, even to principalities and powers in heavenly places, mm. will be made manifest the full and final display of the love of God. Mm. So that, that says something to me. Yes. I mean, Jesus made the statement in this, will all men know that you are my disciples and that you have love one for the other. So, uh, you know, we do, we, I mean, we have a vast array of theological opinions and understanding. And, and you know, we can approach it in one of two ways. We can vilify the guy that disagrees with us. We and can tell say, them they're not even welcome. Th th at, they, at they, our... they really don't belong. Why right. don't you go away and find your own church? Or... We can say, I don't agree with you, but I love you because we are brethren in Jesus. Now, <laughs> you know, some people tend to think that that is compromise. Mm. And I think as long as it does not involve compromise on biblical positions, mm. that disagreement on theological issues is not the end of the world. And maybe I could add, I love you. I don't agree with you, but I don't have all of the answers either. That's it. There's a spirit of humility. That's it. So, I, I, so we're, we're on a journey together. We, we are on a journey together. And by God's grace, we need to recognize how precious the other person is in the sight yes. of God. Yes. I was walking up to my church, uh, uh, into my church one Sabbath morning, and, and one of the, uh, he was actually a retired pastor, said to me, Pastor, why don't we build a church just for the young people? Because, number one, I don't know them. And number two, I don't like the way they worship. 
And I looked at him and I said, don't you understand, my dear brother? I said, I'm not trying to, you're an experienced man of God. We need those young people. And guess what? They need us. Mm -hmm. And the same principle is true when it comes to the church and, and conservative and liberal and everything else in mm. between. Mm. You know, uh, Peter makes the statement that we are all stones, living stones being built into a spiritual house to offer sacrifices acceptable to God. If you watch somebody build a stone wall, you soon discover that not every stone is the same. It wouldn't add to the, to, to, to the beauty of the building. As a matter of fact, it would, or the building of the wall or the house, it would make it look very sterile. But most beautiful edifices that have been built with stones, they're different kinds and different shapes. Same is true in God's church. People are different. Mm. They will always be different. But that does not mean that one is better, one is unacceptable, mm. and that we need to break down the whole church until we can get all the stones to be the same. And if we're all committed to the Jesus as Savior and Lord, we're all on the same foundation. We have the same Part foundation. Of the same building. The same building, the same foundation. And of course, in terms of Adventism, we will all together embrace the, the, you know, our fundamental sure, beliefs. Sure. But there are a vast array of options outside of those 28 fundamental beliefs. Mm -hmm. And even actually in the understanding of those. How those are expressed. How they are expressed. You know, Dan, after teaching at Southern Adventist University for 14 years, I was training pastors. I went back out mm. for 10 years to serve as a pastor in California and in Orlando, Florida. And I learned a vital lesson, I think especially at Cala Mesa Church in California with, a, with about 12 or 1300 members, similar to Toronto. Uh, not so much uh, ethnic diversity, but a lot of uh, diversity in terms of understanding the Bible. I learned that I'm pastor to all of them. Right. And God calls me to love them and to teach the word faithfully to them. And if they think I've rejected them, why in the world would they listen? Right. So there's that challenge. I come back to what you said earlier, that we embrace and celebrate within the context of what's biblically sound, the fact that we are all part of the family together. And, and you know, when we do that, when we are able to, to actually accept and embrace one another, it allows us the freedom to explore one another's beliefs. Sure. And, it, and we become more, not only open to each other, but more open to the world of ideas. And uh, I, I just believe that as Christians living in the final days of human history, we need to be able to, uh, Im, 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 I want to use the word embrace again, but we need to be able to embrace the diversity, not only ethnically and racially, but also in terms of our age groups, in terms of differences in theology, we have been called upon to be the loving church, the church that models what Jesus wanted us to show in terms of the love of the Heavenly Father. And you know, as I look at even the list of the 12, they were a fairly diverse group. Big time. It was almost as if Jesus was saying there's room for everyone in my kingdom. Amen. Dan Jackson, thanks for joining us. We've been talking about leading, leading in a diverse community. I'd like to hear from you. Maybe you say, I'm, I'm experiencing some learnings as I'm leading in my community. Write to us, feedback at ministryemotion.tv. Uh, like Dan just said, we're, we're on a journey together. We don't know everything. We can love each other. We can even learn from each other as we serve together in the name of Jesus. You can also go to our website at ministryinmotion.tv. We've got lots of resources there that will help you face the different challenges of leading in the 21st century. And one of those challenges is leading a diverse community. Well, God bless you. Thanks for being with us on Ministry in Motion today. What an amazing opportunity now to go out filled with the love of God, anointed by the Holy Spirit, building bridges of love and understanding and blessing the lives of those around us.